Alrighty guys, welcome back to another episode of M Creator Lore. So today what we're going to be doing is creating Slate, which is basically um, like a layered kind of material. You can kind of see some examples on the screen right now. What, uh, or pardon me, Shale. We'll be creating Shale. So basically what Shale is, is kind of like a layered version of uh, rocks. And I'm going to be using the... Um, image one of the images for a palette so I can kind of get an idea I think this particular shale is from uh, what was it the uh, Utah uh, region so we can use this color palette for basically introducing some of the things I needed to adjust the last color a little bit so it wasn't as bright on one of the shades so it was too much too high in contrast but that's basically the color palette that i'll be using for the um the actual design now i wanted to start working on the top texture i was originally going to work on the side texture but um it didn't turn out to be what i needed because it was just too too faded in to um be noticeable for any layered system so I decided to go a little bit different uh, with the um, side texture but this could still be used for the top texture I just needed to make some final adjustments to it so that's basically what I worked on and I'm just kind of blending in the, the sides and adding the extra detail and stuff and trying to add um, the different shades for each uh, particular one so I'm going with like uh, six colors because then that makes it a little bit even uh, normally it's uh, what you want for pixel pixel um, palette is for a particular project is around five or seven so generally uh, depending on the complexity of the actual image as well like the, the art you might need a little bit more on the seven range but uh, generally um, it's more of working with a limited amount of pixels rather than just decorating it with as many pixels as you want. So that's why I'm kind of trying to limit myself to only six and then that will give me some colors between certain ones. Now this doesn't mean that you can't use multiple different colors for a project. It's just um, like for one given thing like what we're working right now with um, it's more required for kind of like having one like a few limited ones now if I wanted to add like ruby ore or something like that into this then I could do that I just needed to add another expand the palette to support red but um, you know it, it doesn't really matter too much if you go a little bit over or a little bit under it's just whatever works at a limited pixel range so right now I'm just kind of creating the top texture you can kind of see what I meant by the side texture being too blended so I did want to do a top texture for the, the slate because when you're thinking about how our shale pardon me when you look at the shale at the top you would think that it would be more flat than on the side right so because it's kind of like layered so I wanted it to kind of have like a top texture like this um, just adding some very fine details in to kind of blend in the texture a little bit more and um, adding some sides so it's not such a harsh rim around the top there. So the next thing that I needed to do was create the side texture and uh, this took a little bit more time because I needed to design something that would work with the top there but um, as long as I kept with the same pixel colors it should work fine and I needed to kind of plan out where the low cost low colors for the values would end up being now this is kind of what I would imagine shale to look like when it's in the world itself it's kind of kind of like a layered uh, pattern texture so that's kind of what I was going for I was hoping to get it as long as possible on the other sides I needed to adjust the top a little bit so it would would fit a little bit better with the um, the bottom texture so it was more seamless so that's why I copied that part from the bottom up to the top and I probably yeah I th I'm pretty sure I ended up um, moving that in a little bit more um, to make a texture a little bit better but 
Uh, it takes a little bit of time to develop these things and having a light draft of what you want for your pattern is always good and preferably I should have probably threw this into before I started doing detail work a um, 32 by 32 to see how it was for seamlessness as I did have to make some adjustments later and it could have been um, simplified uh, before I started adding detail so um, when you're working with something like that, you might want to consider like throwing your rough draft into the like into um, a 32. So basically, right around this area, that was too um, too open, I think. So it needed some dark texture for that. So that's basically what I added, just something to blend it in a little bit more. And I was just kind of filling this in, just making sure that it looks good. And that's basically the side texture. I was just zooming in and out to see how it would look at a distance and making just some small adjustments because sometimes it looks better when you look out from a further distance. And yeah, so basically I was happy with that. So I could basically save that and the top texture and that was our base texture done. So now I needed to create the polished version. So that's basically just um, adjusting, like giving it some bevel look to it using light and dark cut shades so basically like I use a uh, white transparent color to kind of blend that in a little bit more with the side there now my original idea was to offset the textures by a little bit and um, keep the contrast and everything and as much as that did help I'm not as experienced with that and I didn't like how it was starting to look because I needed to lower the contrast, or pardon me, the saturation, and the, I think I, I went with, uh, for the lighter color, I went with um, making it more uh, bright, so it just didn't look that good compared to what we were doing before, so I, I ended up just um, adding a little bit of white texture to it, and adjusting the actual transparency for that particular layer. And that allows me to easily see what I'm going to be working with for that particular layer. And I needed to adjust the uh, the mode. I was just going through the modes to see what it would look like for different ones. And I would settled on a couple different modes just to see what it would look like. So I ended up pasting that over onto the top texture as well. So we had something like this. And I'm just copying the light one. So we had a beveled top texture. And I could save that, just all the layer parts. I was just again testing to see what it would look like with different layers to choose one that would work best for this particular texture. And I merged all the layers down and then I could basically go ahead and save the textures as polished versions. So that's basically that, merge the layers down and then I started working on the next part which would be designing the cobbled texture so I wanted to go with something a little bit different um, because I have seen some photos on buildings actually using like slate and stuff and while I was doing the research I was like okay why not make something that was a little bit different like tiled for cobblestone so that would be pretty cool um, when I was working with the textures, I wanted to make it so there was kind of like a kind of a, a border brick kind of texture for cobblestone. And then I would basically merge in uh, some random pattern in the center. So basically that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to use the left and bottom side as a connection. That's why I left the, um, or pardon me, the bottom and right side. And then I left the top and left left side as kind of like a open section so it should be seamless when I connect all the textures up and I was just adding some detail after that to the actual um, texture itself so basically it would give some actual texture and one of the things that I have noticed with a lot of game development is you want to kind of avoid single pixels um, you don't want to add too much noise when it comes to your textures and stuff like that. Like having too much noise can actually take away from the art itself. That's why I am being more loose about the, um, how I'm designing the textures themselves and stuff. 
And I'm just adding the darker part around the edges just to kind of give it a little bit more depth to separate the two textures. So as we can see, this is basically what it would look like when we're actually um, bring it into the blocks thing. Of course, there's going to be shading and stuff a little bit different when we actually um, bring it into the world itself, but that's basically what it will look like. So now I'm going to paste those uh, that palette into our palette template, and then we can work on the mossy mossy texture, which is not our last texture. I'm actually going to be throwing something a little bit special in um, because there was a trilobite fossil at the end and uh, in my research and sh stuff and there is actually a good um, reason to add that so if we expand over to oil and stuff we would need to kind of have some extra additions i'm not sure what we're going to use the fossil blocks for just yet but i wanted to definitely implement some sort of fossil and try to make a trilobite pop out into the um the actual raw form of the block so we can kind of mix that in with other blocks there i'm not sure again what i'll be using it for just at this moment but uh, we might be able to add some sort of mechanic if you have any ideas about that let me know in the comments so the next thing was literally the fossil one i needed to go ahead and create um, something that would look like a trilobite so i needed to try to play around with the design of the textures and stuff like that this is easier said than done uh, when working with um, a limited pixel range, that's for sure. So I needed to kind of design something that would uh, work for the thing. And I have the actual fossil that I brought up on the um, the first image that I had for the project, that the research uh, for, in Leonardo. And I was just basically using that as a reference for designing the the actual skeleton structure of the trilobite and trying to bring it into a pixel form that would kind of look very similar to a trilobite. So once I did that, I just kind of blend in the textures a little bit more and I needed to add a little bit extra detail. And I went ahead and selected all that and brought it down. And that gave me a little bit of a um, area to work with. Now, I wasn't too happy with how bright it was around the actual fossil itself. So what I ended up doing was just fading it in a little bit more to the um, texture. I was playing around with different layers and stuff and trying to see what would look best for basically blending it with the actual texture. And I ended up going with uh, this particular one just because it kind of keeps the shade below it a little bit more. And I figured that would probably be good for keeping the contrast low. Having too much contrast can actually ruin a texture. So um, I didn't want that to happen. So texture recap. This is all the textures that we worked on today. We had the two fossil versions. We had the regular version, the actual version, and then the cobblestone textures. So that's basically what we created today. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.